Hello everyone, welcome back to a new episode of Voice of Cards. I wanted to start this one off by, uh, changing some things here. Default, Mar. Oh, the Emil one is paid, of course. Okay, so this is just where we move around on the map. Eh. Dress of the Bereft. Oh. We can become a meal, Kaine, and, uh, Nier. The pixel art set's pretty cool, though. Even though Nier isn't actually the name of the character. Uh, card backs. Okay, we did get some new stuff. Honestly, I kind of like the, uh, default one the most. Battleboard. Grimoire Vice Board. Table. I'll take the ebony table. Yeah, we'll change the table. There we go. I just haven't got a lot of stuff that I really care about. Background music. Devil is music. Man, that would be nice to have. But, uh... Oh well. Let's go ahead and get in here, why don't we? So you may have already noticed, uh... I'm not feeling super well today. Um... I woke up yesterday sick. I don't know if I was sick during the last Voice of Cards recording or not, but I'm definitely sick today. But, uh, basically all I ever hear is that it makes my voice much deeper. So, uh, it's whatever. Not the biggest thing in the world. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and hop in. What exactly were we doing? We got the, th the fish. So we just need to go back to Shoreland, right? And we have Bruno on the squad now, who wants to be an adventurer. So he carries around a sword. In hand, you head back Even though he doesn't use the sword. Bruno looks at your group sadly, reluctant for this little adventure to end. Sorry, Bruno, that's how it happens, friend. You hand the fish to Oreo and ask him to make you the supplement. Give me a moment, he says, then takes the fish and heads into the back. One hour late there. It's ready, he says, emerging from his room and handing you a bottle. Oreo's homemade supplement is nutritious and flushes out must uh, monster poison. Energy concentrate. You hope this will get Mar back on his feet. You need to get back to Unionville on the double. But before that... How will you thank Bruno? Well, take care. You face Bruno and say, take care, then run off. But Bruno stops you and says he wants to journey with you just a little longer. But Oreo is quick to douse the flames of his desire. You will stay here and study, he commands. Then you leave me no choice. Bruno's expression reads as he raises both hands behind his head and... squats at hyper speed. Really? You gonna, you gonna win the top prize for the squatting minigame in Final Fantasy VII? I want to show this power to the world, Bruno proclaims to his father. You have much to learn, my son, Oreo retorts as he starts sidestepping at breakneck speed. Only the sound of their labored breathing and bodies moving resonates through the otherwise silent room. You can only look on in stunned silence at the enigmatic display. You can make a song out of that beep. -na 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 -na. 30 minutes later. Bruno falls to his knees, panting. This is my limit. You have grown, my son, Oreo says, looking no worse for wear. So are you coming with us or not? Melanie interjects, ever the blunt one. Only our muscles know the answer, comes Bruno's cryptic reply. I don't get it, Riddus remarks frankly. On the condition that he study nutrition upon his return, Bruno is allowed to go with you for just a little while longer. You realize that these two have a very special way of talking that no one else can understand. 
Make your way to the Unionville Inn and give Mar some energy concentrate. I'm actually really happy to be playing like this because um, I don't have to do a lot of talking. Roar in the distance, you realize you need to get the supplement to Mar so you can investigate the sound together. Yeah, it could be the dragon. Yeah. All right, let's get back to Mar. Wait, where was Unionville again? Jeez, all the way up here, really? Yeah, it was. Yeah, we gotta get him out of this hell hole with the stupid mayor. Well, I guess it's mostly just the mayor that's an asshole. Everybody else here is pretty chill. Here to stay the night? Meet Mar. Alright, Mar, I'm here, friend. Mar lies listlessly upon the bed, looking somewhat haggard. You help Mar sit up. Drink this, Mar, you say to him gently. He weakly opens his mouth, and you slowly pour the energy concentrate inside. Mar abruptly bolts up and turns his head toward you with a puzzled look. It looks like Mar is all better now. How do I express my joy? Bear hug! You give Mar a tight hug. Mar mules softly in discomfort. Overcome with joy, you sob and stroke Mar's head. No. Melanie and Riddus watch you too with a smile. Bruno is deeply moved to see nutrition bringing a smile to others. Mar rejoined the party. All right, now we can go investigate that With noise. This, you can finally put the happenings of that strange village behind you. You decide to take Bruno back to Shoreland, then continue your search for the dragon. See Bruno to his home in Shoreland. Wow, that was a fast trip. For Bruno. Sorry, Bruno. Said you could travel with us a little bit longer. I didn't realize it was that little. He basically jumped across to another town and that was it. Alright. I guess we'll go fight the monster over here too, though. That's probably what it intends. You arrive at Bruno's house. Though he seems to want to adventure a little more, he reluctantly enters his house. You ask Oreo if he knows anything about the monster behind that mighty roar. He says that the creature nests atop a tower not far from town. Oh yeah, that tower! With that, your next destination is decided. Here, you will part ways with these two, but you owe a great deal to the nutritionist and his son. Bruno looks at you, his eyes begging you to let him come along. What will you say? Mm, help us take the dragon down. Let us defeat the dragon together, you say to him. You are sure his power and knowledge will come in handy against the beast. And you realize with a grin, he will be so happy just to come along that he will not want a share of the reward. Yeah, boy. Bruno is happy he can continue the journey, but Oreo stops him before he can get carried away. You must stay here and study, Oreo says. Bruno explains that the journey thus far has taught him the splendor of nutrition, and he now wishes to travel the world to deepen his knowledge. After hearing his son out, Oreo suddenly removes his glasses. Oh no. And in the blink of an eye, the flesh of Bruno's cheeks, pectorals, and abdomen recess. And Bruno is lifted off his feet with a dull roar. Your eyes go wide at Oreo's assault, which was too fast for your eyes to catch. 
Knowledge of nutrition can help save lives, but also strike down enemies, Oreo says softly. I'm terrified. It's kind of hilarious to me that when he took his glasses off, I think the fox's eyes opened, because I don't think the eyes were open before. Wow, nutrition is incredible, Riddis marvels, not putting too much thought into the events before her. Maybe I'm just crazy, though. Knowledge is the true power. You tremble, never wanting to make an enemy of Oreo. I thought we were going to have to fight him. I was like, wouldn't we all just be crushed to paste if we got hit by him once? Though Oreo still deems his son's knowledge insufficient, he tells him to travel the world and surpass him someday. Thank you, father, Bruno says from the ground, moved to tears by the strength of Oreo's knowledge. So it comes to pass that you journey to the tower with Bruno to find the Roaring Beast. Bruno joined your dragon hunting party. Mm. Yay! Yet another colorful character. The final colorful character? Could be. I think there were only like five spaces on the thing for characters. In Shoreland, a strapping father and son dedicate themselves to nutrition. The father suppresses his son, claiming knowledge is power. The son resists, claiming power is power. With the aid of both, their exhausted comrade springs back to life. After learning prominent information from the father, The party heads to the imposing tower near the shore where monsters nest to find the source of the roar that shakes the land. And what should they find there at? The Dragon's Tower. Chapter 5. I wonder how many chapters there are. I'm gonna guess 8 or 10. Eight feels too soon, though. <clears throat> All right, journey to the tower. This is our requirements for Oreo's flip side story. Cool. All right, Oreo, Let's see what you got. You were over here, yes. Oreo develops various supplements at his nutrition clinic in Shoreland, a few of which he even gave to the royal family in lieu of tax once or so he claims. He'll tell you men keep nutritional secrets to avoid disclosing his formula. But he'll note it's nothing like the Ivory Order's medicine. Rumor is, though, that boogers are involved. Ew. Yeah, see, the fox's eyes are closed. Before. That's terrifying. That's a new way that the fox is alive. Or that Oreo, like, opened its eyes, basically. Alright, how's my HP looking? Did I need to rest? I did not. Musty Tower, let's go. Yes. We have finally arrived at the Tower of Legend. Is everyone ready? You ask with a posed look. Bruno is the first to respond. But this is just an old lighthouse, he remarks, oblivious to your sudden embarrassment. Riddis snorts to herself, seeing you red in the face from jumping to conclusions. Don't make fun of me. All right, to town in search of the dragon. All right, our first enemy in this place. <coughs> what do we got? Oh, these guys. Okay, um, Breeze? Kablooey, yay. Okay, so you almost Excellent. died from that. Um, I guess I'm just gonna loose an arrow on you. Wow, that almost killed you too. Jeez. This will win, actually. I think. Sure will. 
Okay, I think it's the first time we've ever used that attack, too. <coughs> that was neat. Enemies here don't seem super strong. We might be sort of overleveled, honestly, considering what level Bruno was when we got him into the party. So... Here's this sturdy door has a magic seal on it. Unfortunately, it is out of her realm of expertise. Riddus rolls up her sleeves and shouts, Open Sesame. You swear you have heard these words somewhere before. Yeah, everyone has. You all watch in silence as the door stays shut. You snort to yourself, seeing Riddus red in the face. Force Br have Bruno force it open. Let's do it. It said they were out of her expertise, so I guess Melanie's already tried it. What, right? Like, let's have Bruno try it. Bruno exhales deeply, then places both hands on the door. He pushes with all his might. His breath labored, chest heaving, sweat dribbling. Because when we first walked up to the door, it said it's out of her expertise, so I'm guessing it was referring to Melanie there. And it opens. It seems the magic seal could not protect the door from the physical might of your most stalwart companion. Damn right. This is the power of power, Bruno Pants, but you promptly ignore him and enter the tower. Well, it's a good thing we picked you up. Well, thank you, Bruno. There's a hole. Interesting. <clears throat> That's different. Didn't mean didn't even mean to step there. I'm glad I didn't fall. That would have been unfortunate. Oh, hey, it's one of the pyro wolves. Do as much damage as we possibly can to you. Yeah, that's pretty big. Mm -hmm. And let's burn you alive. Ooh, you're fast. Okay, that should be enough to kill you. Good stuff. You can heal? Have I ever seen them do that? I don't know that I have. Goodbye. Now you. Shine? Might have to wait for a follow-up attack from you, Ash. Yeah, there we go. Now it's dead. Good stuff. Jolly good show. Bunch of XP. Level up? No. Fortunately, I'm not that lucky. Okay. I just want to make sure I see... Aha! Every space here. Because you never know when a chest could be hiding like that. Just a quality sal uh, salve, unfortunately. But, uh... Still useful. An enemy appears. What you got for me, rando enemy? Just three of you guys. Interesting. Kind of boring. Uh, do I do thunderstorm here? Hmm. I honestly don't think I do. I think a better call would just be to use this. Well, I didn't expect the crit. I was gonna get them low for uh, Ash to use Spinning Ray, but... One of them will die from this, at least. Alright, gonna get one attack. Use it wisely. Okay, you only really hurt Melanie there. 
But you did get some damage down. But now you are dead. Goodbye. That armor I got for Vitus is really good. I'm glad I got that as early as I did. Made a lot of things a lot easier. Alright. Not really a ton going on on this side of the uh, tower. We just want to fill this in though. Alright, what now? Just one of you, huh? You should die f just from a quick shot. Sorry, flame pupper. Goodbye. Man, when's my next level up? I want the level up. I'm fiending for one. Uh-huh. Over here, maybe? No? That doesn't really accomplish anything. It must be here, then. This damn maze. How dare you have a maze of holes. Three you guys again. Decrease bolt damage dealt. To allies and by enemies. Eh? And fight. I wasn't really planning on using uh, bolt damage anyway, but go off, I guess. Uh, let's hit you with one of these. Boom, 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 boom. Big crits. That was lucky. Yeah, it was a little bit, but it's fine. We can kill you now. And then we can start working on the final one. Wow, good hit. You should be proud of yourself. That was big damage. On an archer, no less. You can't even hurt the archer. Oh, you're, you're juking, though. I applaud you for that, at least. Alright, will we win? Yay! Finally a level up. HP plus two, attack plus one, defense plus one. That's a good one. And lightning proof. Cool. Bruno was the one that had waterproof, I think. So if we ever fight a water monster, he would be useful, but uh... I haven't really seen very many water monsters, and I imagine the dragon's gonna be fire. Unless it's like a Gyarados or something. Do you like ice? I don't feel like you would. Wow, a miss. Okay. Hit you with the poison, then. Yeah, eat it, nerd. And we should be able to finish you off with Ash. Oh, but you're slightly too fast. Phew, I gotta take a sip of water, man. Ugh, my throat, my poor, poor throat. Makes me really happy that there's not very many games I'm playing right now that require uh, a lot of talking. Like narrating, that is. Get immunity to attack and defense down. Useful, I suppose. Your speed is laughable, though. It's like as low as, uh, Ashes. Which is another reason I would probably not use you. Alright, looks like I got basically everything here. Yeah, boy. Let's go. Musty Tower, second floor. Oh, this one looks very confusing. Okay. Just, wow, there's a lot of open space that I didn't expect. Decrease water damage. I don't think any of us do water damage. And fight. That skelly's new, though. <clears throat> hmm. If 
feel like more than anything, I want to get rid of you first, now that I know you can heal. Uh, of course, I could just straight up take you out right now. Boom, 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 boom. I don't think you can finish it off with an attack, but... Attack it anyway. Yeah, that was just 10. Don't attack her. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to my cries. Alright, you're probably weak to fire, right? Being undead and all? No? Okay. Noted. I think I'm gonna go ahead and heal Melanie with this turn. She needs it. Thank you. Ow. Yeah, you actually have a pretty high amount of attack, unlike most of the things here. You're actually a little spooky. Which makes sense because you're a spooky, scary skeleton. <laughs> Alright, more big XP. No more level ups. I feel like I think Melanie's the one that gets one next. Whatever, we'll see. Alright, so where am I wanting to go? This like straight line passage here is weird. Why do you exist? Your footing suddenly crumbles. With no way of saving yourselves, you fall downward. Okay, so that Once was the point. More from the bottom. Is there going to be a lot of that in this dungeon? A lot of old JRPGs had this a lot. I think Golden Sun had one that had a level that had this mechanic where the floor will rot and you'll fall. <coughs> or crumble. In one of the lighthouses. Which is funny because we're in a lighthouse right now. Uh, quick shot can finish you off immediately. By Flame Puppy. Sorry, I had to do you like that. Alright, you can set it on fire. If you could get a crit, that would be amazing. No, unfortunately not. Slashy, slashy. Okay, waste your time healing, I don't mind. Now you're dead. Enjoy death, tree shouldn't have come here. Alright, boom. There's Melanie's level up. 22 attack, 30 HP, some more speed. I'll take the left one. Thank you. <coughs> wraith wolf story. Cool. So it's a wraith wolf. I was just calling it Flame Puppy. Oops, that's the wrong one. We must go to monsters. These demonic wolf spirits travel in packs the same way living wolves do, though mysteries abound. Chief among them, why these creatures have no heads. Upon crossing into the spirit realm, wraith wolves allow their pack mates to slash their necks, proof that they shall never be tamed by loathsome humans. That's an interesting idea. They slash their own necks because they're like, no one will ever tame us. They'll never be able to put a collar on us now. Although I hate to break it to you, Wraith Wolves. You, they could still put you in a harness. Because that doesn't go around your neck. But we, we, they, they don't have to know that. Then they'd have to cut their bodies too. And then they'd just be basically a will-o'-wisp. Multiply gold earned from victory by two. Cool. We'll definitely take that. Uh, quick shot you. Yep. Goodbye, Skelly. And now you die, Goblin. Boom. Alright. 
So the enemies here aren't super bad so far, but at least we got a little bit more gold. Another level up for Ash. Immunity to paralysis. Two more HP, one more attack, and another speed. Well, the immunity to paralysis is nice. What's in this treasure? 1,000 gold. Thank you. All right, so with that, I think we're probably going to go ahead and end this episode off here. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.